Hello and welcome to the Redmen TV and another edition of the Extra Time Show. We start this week's episode with a bit of sad news about Ronnie Moran. Um, sadly, he's passed away today. The club obviously showed their condolences. Uh, it was the weird legend does get battered around, and I've used it myself for for former players and managers and things like that. But this guy has devoted his, his entire life really to to the club. Um, was was it one of the longest savers? employees and uh, the last surviving member of the boot room which consisted of Bill Shankly, Bob Paisley, Joe Fagan and Reuben Bennett so obviously the thoughts of, of the whole Liverpool family go out to his uh, family and uh, yeah what, what more can be said the great man devoted his life to the club and uh, he, he'll be sorely missed by everyone involved with the club um, but uh, back to um, on the field matters it's um, Liverpool drew one all with Manchester City. A good point. I think people would have taken the point before the game. The way we played, we could have really got the win, but there was some sitters missed. Sterling, Sterling for one, and Lalana. So uh, Jamie Carragher, he uh, he tweeted saying, "Great game should have been four four. Midfield superb, and uh, City's from five was superb. So it, it was an end to end game for the neutral. You can imagine uh, they had a good go, but uh, they had a good time even. But uh, yeah, it was a great game." And um, yeah, so we didn't take points off them, and we'll go into the last eight or nine games now, and, and just hope that they'll drop points elsewhere. So we're still in with it, and and the the, the weird big six pointer was getting battered around as well. So we've 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 cancelled them out from taking points off us, and uh, yeah, it's open for for better. Um, so now we go into the international break, which I'm sure everyone's so excited about and ecstatic because we love that. Not uh, we've got the reserves. They are with Jurgen Klopp over in Tenerife, and uh, there, was, there was a picture on the Liverpool Twitter that went round of uh, Jurgen Klopp laughing his head off because uh, Dejan Lovren tried to get a header and missed it or something. So uh, he probably could be out for another three weeks because he missed that header. So uh, we had, with regards to the international players, we had Jordan Henderson. He posted on Instagram saying, uh, "Good luck to the lads on the internationals. Couple of important games, three lions, and there's the new kit there. Sadly." Jordan Henderson doesn't join the team because he is still a bit injured, but it was brilliant news for Ben Woodburn and Harry Wilson, who got called up to the Wales squad. For any Welsh Liverpool fans out there, I'm sure you'll love this little picture we've got of them there, looking like the worst bouncers ever. They said, not tonight, lads. They go, you know what, I think we will come in anyway with no ID. Uh, but, you know, good good luck to them. What, what do you hope for their career? I know Wales get a bit of stick for getting young lads in and giving them a cap just so England can't poach them. But it does look like they, they will be getting a bit of game time under Chris Coleman and he, and he does give uh, young lads a, a good chance. Um, with regards to the England squad, we've got Nathaniel Klein. He posted a picture on Twitter saying training. There he is with Nathan Redmond. And uh, Nathaniel Klein has not come in for stick over recent weeks, but people are starting, like, there's, there's not like murmurs of discontent, but people are saying Trent Alexander-Arnold is playing well. Should he be replacing Klein? So we had a couple of comments last uh, week. We had Tyler Westfield said, I'd really like to see Alexander-Arnold in the first team. If we could bring him in at right back and move Klein to left back, that'd be sound. That is some good analysis. That is a good tactical point to be made there. I'd not thought about that. I'm not sure if Klein can play left back. Um, but, you know what? Uh, He's got the pace, and, and as we see, Milner was getting, uh, has been for the last few weeks, been getting done for pace down that left. Um, we had Liam Carter, who also said, is it just me that thinks Klein is shit going forward? And uh, we've seen from Trent, Trent scores like three kicks, Trent takes penalties for like the England under-23s, he's got a good cross on him, he, he's just as fast. Obviously, he's not as good as Klein defensively, we know that, but it, it's this kind of paradox with Liverpool that... We beat teams that are supposedly better than us and can't beat teams that are supposedly worse than us. Could Trent be the man to unlock these teams that sit back, whereas Klein could be the guy to come in against the big teams and defend well? So let me know what you think, because that is a debate that's really starting to heat up in, in the next few weeks. Um, a couple of random things on, on the internet from Liverpool players. We had Loris Karius saying, Will Tattoo Day throw back to Thailand? And then there's the picture of him with his body out. Mate, just use t 
fucking Tinder like everyone else instead of getting your bloody body out on, on Twitter. Um, we also had Paddy Berger. He was posting about a Liverpool Legends game, which happens on the weekend. Um, good luck to the Reds if we play uh, Real Madrid. Hopefully we'll get a win and it'd be nice to see. Paddy Berger is skillful, by the way. I went to watch him in the Masters in the Echo Arena and he had some pure skill. And my mum fancied him. So, um, other legends of Liverpool, we have Fernando Torres, turned 33. Happy birthday to Torres. I think everything's forgiven like with Torres now because he was so bad when he played for Chelsea and he did actually win the trophies that Liverpool have failed to win in the last few years. And on, a, on an even, not looking at legends, but looking at possible future legends, we had Dirk Kuyt posting a, a, a video of his son on Instagram. Um, and this, this lad, he's just skinning, he's skinning heads. Takes out about four little lads. Betty's at the front post. Great video. Go and check out that on Dirk Coit's Instagram. And uh, yeah, maybe Liverpool should be looking to sign him up. Uh, a better first touch than his dad as well. Um, so yeah, that was that. Sticking with the young footballers, we move on to the under 23s. And there were starts for Joe Gomez, Shea Ojo, and Marco Gruwich when we played uh, Huddersfield in the Premier League Cup. It was one all going into extra time, and then Tony Gomez got made put a two one, and then we uh, conceded again. So it went to penalties. The lads who stepped up and had the bottle were Kev Stewart, Gomez, Madja Gomez, and Nathaniel Phillips, and Tony Gomez all netted in a five four win in penalties. So you know what? Roll on the next game. We play Norwich on the thirty first. Getting young lads to win cups is good because we look at the current team and we've had the likes of Lalana say we've we've missed out on League Cup finals and, and UEFA Cup finals because there's just no real winners there. So start them winning at a young age and, and bring that through to the senior team. And it's uh, more winning ways for the under-18s. We had a 3-0 win over Blackburn in the under-18s mini-league, which we've went through, which means uh, that's a great three points and some good goal difference. We go top of that mini-league now. So, uh, yeah, keep racking up them wins and we could be champions. So, great news for the under-18s as well. Uh, with the regards to the loans, we're getting to the end of season now and, and it's pretty much the same picture. The same players who haven't been starting and not really getting started. And, and the Players that moved out are uh, Pedro Chirivea. Uh, he enjoyed a bittersweet time with uh, Go Ahead Eagles. He scored, but they beat, were beaten 3 1, and his team went to bottom of the league. Not nice to see, but you know what? He, he's getting goals, and, and that is always nice to see. Brannigan, he got an assist with, with a corner. No, what, what can you do? Yeah, he's put a corner in, he's got an assist, and he tweeted, uh, Great to get my first assist for the. Uh, for whoever it was. I did have the picture somewhere, but you know what? I'll put that into the video now. Seamless. Seamless indeed. So we also had um, Sacco was tweeting. Sacco started three and three now and kept three clean sheets. I know I had a go at one of the comments last week saying Palace would be top of the league, but I'll tell you what, he, he, he's doing it. He's doing it. He put a picture up of it. the Sacco, Ben Teke and me there uh, looking like the, the worst audio ever. Um, He's playing well, Sacco, and, and hopefully this does push his price up and, and Palace will come in with like a 15 million bid. Uh, Lazar Markovic played against Everton. He had like a little bit of beef with Seamus Coleman. I remember watching the game and uh, Ashley Williams absolutely like power drive them to the floor. Um, but yeah, they got, got smashed 4-0. Flattering scoreline, we probably should have been about 2 0, but you know what, it is what it is. Uh, Andre Wisdom has been playing as well in a 5 0 win against Austria Vienna for Red Bull Salzburg. And Danny Ward had a strange weekend because he's been quite consistent um, and he was beaten 4 0, so not, not a good week for him. As, as I said, not really much to write on with the others. Uh, transfer target of the week we had Ankor Jadhav said, uh, Great content, Lewis. Who would you like us to buy in the summer? Um, I'm, I probably will save this till the end of the season or, or maybe next week during the international break um, just because there'll be nothing really to talk about and, and I, like uh, off the top of my head Lacazette, Hector, Rodriguez and maybe the Hood but uh, we'll go into more detail about that and Chris is going to be doing loads of stuff on transfers as well uh, Walking said check out Terence Congolo plays for Feyenoord I believe 6 foot 1 pacey left back that plays centre back sometimes he's about 22 in football manager he's always turned Premier League quality because as we know from a football manager with the likes of Freddie Adu they always go on to greatness don't they did he not? Uh, no, I had a look at him. Uh, and I do think we, we do need height in our defence. Um, we do need speed as well. And, and I was looking at him. He looks a bit gangly to me, but uh, it's easy to say that with a tall player. Um, 
he is fast that he he does put a decent ball in. Um, he, he starts a lot of games for Feyenoord. I think he's played like over a hundred games in the last three years, which is good considering the, the injuries that Liverpool get so regularly. Um, he reminds me a bit of Ali Sissoko, so I'm not quite convinced with him yet. Um, as I said, I'd rather go for a Hector or Rodriguez kind of guy, but. He does, he does tick the boxes of, of, a, of a tall guy and, and fast guy, so he is worth keeping an eye on there. So rounding off then with the comments of the week, we had James Hogan said, uh, I like this show but hate the presenter. Come on, brother. Um, Anthony Jones said, that t-shirt is horrific. Sort your life out, lad. I put the t-shirt on. Just to spice it up for everyone, I'm not really asked what I, what I wear. Uh, Gareth Hughes said, wow, is Miami Vice making a comeback? Just reminded me of Tommy Fossetti, and I like that. And Lance Vance, what a snake, never forget. Uh, Carlos David also put, boring, <laughs> boring ensemble, Lewis's sporting gay camo, shout of the week, I think that was for Carlos there. And uh, in serious terms, Hardik Vat said, not to sound deluded, hoping for Chelsea to slip up three to four games and winning the rest of our games, and we can have a sticky title race still. That's what I hope for anyway. I don't think it is, it, it, obviously it is, it is very much optimistic, but I think that Liverpool fans get their brand as deluded sometimes by other fans who are really pessimistic and bitter and have no hope. So let's just use optimistic as a synonym for deluded and say, yeah, let, let's hope for the best. Let's hope Chelsea slip up. Let's hope going into these last few games of the season that we can just get every point that counts. Uh, so questions to ask yourself this week then. Trent over Klein. Is it worth thinking about? What would you do? Let me know. It's an international week uh, or, or two weeks. Just get your frustration out. Just tell me how much you hate it. Don't, don't we all? Don't we all? It's club, just as the Prem's spicing up, we go, oh, you know what? Let's go and play some games that don't really count. Um, what are your hopes for Woodden and Wilson? for Wales and uh, next week I'll be bringing you the whole roundup of all the international stuff so uh, be sure to check out that so as always please like please subscribe please share the video and most of all take it easy